Thank you, Jesus. Let's just worship Him for a little bit. Praise and adore You. We magnify You, Father. King of kings and Lord of lords, You're magnificent, You're glorious, You're excellent. 
We praise you, we adore you. Kora baba hande re bebe hendo rama mama honde re bebe kira baba hande. You're worthy of it all, Father. Worthy. We adore you, we praise you, we magnify you here this morning. Kora mama mama hande re bebe hendo. Kora mama mama kara baba baba hande re bebe kira baba honde re bebe hendo. Tora baba baba mama hore bebe bebe kira mama mando. King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh Lord, we thank you this morning. For your awesome presence that's in this place. For the Holy Ghost that is here this morning. We thank you for every person in this place. That they've come expecting to receive the word. And Lord we thank you for the word that's going to go forth. That when it goes from my lips it's not my words but your words Lord. And Lord I thank you for everybody here. That you're interested in each one's life. And we just thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Father. It's good to be with you again. Thank you, Pastor Cindy and Yanni, for inviting us. Oh, thank you, Father. The title of my sermon this morning is What You're Doing With It. What you're doing with it. So what are you doing with the Word of God? I know this church is a, a church that's reading through the Bible, and you're putting the Word in. And you're reading the Word. And you're gaining knowledge from the Word. But what are you doing with the Word? I want to challenge you this morning. What are you doing with the Word? You know, it's not the pastor can't do anything with the Word for you. It's up to each one of us in this place. Amen. And before I get into my message, I just want to... I was in, in Mozambique at the end of January. I spent eight days there ministering. We do mission work up there. And I had an awesome time up there, but I found something. People are hungry. People are hungry for the Word of God. We minister to people. People would come in the evening after a whole, you spend the whole day from 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock, you're ministering. And then you just want a break, but people come to you afterwards. They want to pray. And then people bring them from the villages. And the one lady came. She goes, my head feels like it's 10 times the size. Okay, that's nice. I think we can deal with this. We know what to do. First of all, the pastors tell me she's a Muslim. Should I pray for her? What's your response? Absolutely. God doesn't care if you're a sinner or not. He still wants to heal you. Then, she'd gone to the witch doctor. Because first of all, Allah cannot heal you. She discovered that very quickly. She went to the witch doctor the witch doctor, Muti, didn't work. So her last resort was to come where? To the church. But it needs to come to the point where your first resort is the church. The first step, because of what's happening in the church, I'm going to the church first. Amen? Not to the witch doctor, not to the doctor, come to church first. That's when the word is at, in action. Well, God healed her anyway. We sent her home. She went to go fetch all her moot and we burnt it. Amen. Get rid of, you've got to get rid of the witch, witchcraft stuff because it doesn't help me praying for you. You go home and the moot is still there. It still has a power. Amen. But I'm going to tell you here this morning, the devil has no power over you. And something I always do when I arrive in a foreign country, I get off the plane and I say, devil, I've arrived. I'm in charge. You leave. Why? I'm challenging him. Because the power that's in me is greater than the power that's in this world. Amen. The Word. Read it daily. But what are you doing with the Word that's coming into you? I want you to go to Romans chapter 12. Because as you're putting the Word in, this is what the Word should be doing to you. And we're going to read verse 1 and 2. It says, I Paul's writing, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. And look what he says. This is just your reasonable service. The way you treat your body is important. Come on. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If I start destroying the temple, where's the Holy Ghost going to live? He wants to use me and you. You know, some people die before their times. Why? 
because they're not looking after themselves. God wants to still use them and do things, but some, many ministers have died before their time because they're not looking after the temple. Then it goes on to say, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the... What does it mean to renew something? I've got to refresh it. You know, if you, if you, if you use a computer, if you push F5, what does that do? It refreshes the screen. There's a refreshing. So every time you're reading the Word of God, you're renewing your mind. It's something you... People say, yeah, well, I've read the Word. I read it once this week. Have you spent time with the Lord? Renewing your mind is a constant thing. It's a daily thing. When you get up in the morning, you need to renew your mind. When you go to work, it's a, it's a constant thing because, and we're going to touch on it just now, things so easily attached to you in this world. It says what? Renew your mind that you may prove... What is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? How are you going to prove what's the acceptable and perfect will of God if I'm not renewing my mind? Hmm? Come on. You've got to renew your mind. And that's by spending time in the Word of God. If you spend time in the Word, you're renewing your mind. But it goes beyond just renewing my mind. But my mind needs to be renewed daily. Because there are thoughts that are going to come. There are thoughts that are going to come. And when you get sick, signs and symptoms will come, and thoughts come with that. Oh, you know, we, we just had COVID. But people are still thinking about COVID. My throat's sore. I think I've got COVID. Well, what are you doing with that thought? If I take hold of that thought and I start dwelling on it, I start speaking that thought, I start living that thought, I gotta, the Word of God says I've got to cast down those thoughts and imaginations that are against the Word of God. And if I cast that down, it's going to bring a change. And I actually made a note on something this morning. Where are you? Your mentality becomes your reality. Have you Think about that. Your mentality becomes your reality. And there's a study. They took, there were two twins born in the same family. A very poor family. The one twin grew up and he remained poor. He actually became a beggar on the streets. The other twin became a very wealthy man. But he dealt with his mentality. Where this guy didn't deal with his mentality. Same brother, same blood. If you start dealing with, with the thoughts in your mind and your, your, the, the mentality you have on the things towards on this earth, you'll see things change very quickly. Amen. We're going to go to James chapter 1 verse 25. One of your pastors left. The Lord had a word for her. Now they're coming back. Okay. Thank you, Father. James chapter 1, verse 21 to 25. James is writing, he says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. In the times we're living in, there's an overflow of wickedness. You can go down the road and look at a billboard, and it'll be contrary to the Word of God. Hmm? Come on. What it, on your TV, there's an overflow of wickedness when you're watching TV series. Come on. Over the years, they slowly introduced lesbian and gay couples on the TV programs. Now it's just common. And the world has accepted it. Hmm? Filth, lay aside filthiness and overflow of wickedness. Another translation says, lay aside everything that so easily, every sin that so easily besets you. So easily. Have you noticed how some things easily beset you? Come on. There are things that so easily, they, they are, and well, I'm not a sinner. You, know, you might do something. You, you, taxi cut you off. What can you do? Come on. How many of you got angry when the taxi cut you off? And you've got some nice words to say. Come on. No, it's true. And you will yach and you, you show your hand signal. What do you have to say? Lord, forgive me. But you can carry on in that for the rest of the day and it changes your whole day. 
The rest of the day, you're in a bad mood. Everybody who comes across your path, you have something bad to say. Come on, that's something, so that, that is what he's talking about there. But he carries on. He says, receive the meekness, the implanted, inserted word, which is able to save, I, I put that word inserted, implanted, which means it, it could also be inserted word, which is able to save you, your souls. Receive with meekness the word of God. So as you, as you read through the word, don't speed read. I know you, you, your pastor is giving you a challenge. Get through the word. If you've read it through it once, the next time take it a little slower. Get through it once and then take it slower. And let that word just come into you. Let that word begin to affect your life. Amen. Verse 22. This is important. But be doers of the word and not hearers only. I'm going to stop there. What are you doing here this morning? Why did you come to church? I'm asking you to hear the word. Anybody else got an answer? Yeah, there's lack of still in any plaque. You know why I enjoy Mozambique? Man, they are loud. Hallelujah. I get a hallelujah back. <laughs> they are loud. They're not conservative. And I think that too much of the church has been conservative. It's time we, we change. Hmm? You came to hear the word. But when you walk out of this place, what are you going to do with the word? You've got to do the word. But too many people come to church, they hear the word, they leave. Ten minutes down the road, they can't even remember what they heard. They might hear, remember Pastor Yanni's title. He's been speaking on the Holy Spirit. How many of you remember all, I think you're on part five already. Seven. How many of you remember all seven? Sometimes you have to do yourself a favor and go back and listen to it again. Because you become a hearer of the word, but not a doer. If you hear the word and you start doing the word, it'll have an effect on your life. Amen? And I've seen it over and over. Even in our church, people come, they hear, and then they say, why is my life not changing? Well, you're not being a doer of the word. You're just hearing. You're not coming to church just to hear the word. The word's supposed to make a change in you. And the only way it can change me is if I start doing what the word of God says I, I can do and who I am. Because as you're reading the word, you're learning who you are in Christ. Amen? Who are you in Christ? More than a conqueror. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. I'm in fellowship with Him. Amen? That's who I am. When there's sickness in my household, does it stay or does it go? It goes. It has no place. Oh, I can't wait for the men's camp. <laughs> Yanni's giving 20 minutes. <laughs> Men, oh, you're in trouble. And then it carries on to say, deceiving yourself. See, if you become a hero of the word, you're not deceiving Pastor Yanni, Pastor Cindy, or any of the other pastors. You deceive yourself. Think about it. Who am I deceiving? You're deceiving yourself. Everything might look, in the, in the natural, everything looks good, but in the spiritual, it's not so good. And you're not deceiving the past, you're deceiving yourself. Because that's what the Word of God is there, to bring change in our lives, amen? And it carries on to say, for if anyone is a hearer of the Word and not a doer, he's like a man observing a natural face in a mirror. Have you ever looked in the mirror? How many of you looked in the mirror this morning? Do you still remember what you look like? Or has that changed? I know, I looked in the mirror and combed my hair, but after that, <laughs> you, you don't, you actually, that, and that's what he's saying. If you're a hearer of the word, you're like a person that looks in the mirror and you walk away and you actually, I, I posed that question in Mozambique. I said, what did you look, the one pastor said, oh, one sexy young man. That's it. That's the way. <laughs> it's a good response. Verse 24. For he observes himself, goes away, immediately forgets what kind of man he is. And that's the same as we, we forget who we are in Christ when we only hear the word and we don't become doers of the word. It's important. Because there's, 
We li- yeah, let me just finish. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not forgetful, uh, not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, he's one. This one will be blessed in what he does. Maybe you should be asking yourself, am I blessed in everything I'm doing? Everything I lay in my hands to, am I being blessed? If your answer is no, according to James, you're not doing the word. Come on. That's a challenge this morning. That's a challenge. You know what? Every one of us are going to face circumstances. I don't care where, who you are and where you are in life. The Bible promises you will face persecution, tests and trials. Am I right, Pastor Ian? Yeah. The word promises. Did Jesus face persecution, tests and trials? When he, when he was water baptized and he came out of the water, who led him out into the desert? The Holy Spirit led him out into the desert place where he faced temptation. Go study it. You will face things. But why? Because if I'm a hearer of the word and a doer of the word, I start facing things and I start dealing with them according to the word of God. Because let me tell you, you might face it once. Next time it comes up, when I stand facing the same situation, it's going to be easier to tackle. Because I've already built my faith up in that area and I can make it easier to tackle the next time. That mountain no longer looks like a mountain. It looks like a molehill. Amen. Amen. Well, the times we're living in, there's an attack on family. Matter of fact, if you go throughout history, the devil's tried to attack family from the beginning all the way through to where we are now. But even now, it's a greater attack on the family. The bigger attack on the family. And that's why I said, well, men, men in the household have a big responsibility. If you go read Ephesians chapter 5. If things are going wrong in your household, it's not your wife's fault. It's your fault. You're the head of the home. The buck stops at your door. Think about that. Ouch. I had to say ouch. Hey, nah. <laughs> if there's sickness and disease in your house, get rid of it. Deal with it. Let's go to Psalm 23. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Can I go fetch it out of? Natalie, Natalie, bring me Natalie. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ora, mama, mama, handi. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? Sorry, I know I sent you to Psalms. Let's go to James chapter 1. I just, just feel to jump ahead here a bit. Thank you, Father. No, sorry, James chapter 2. And then we'll come back to Psalm 23. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh. Give me your hands. Oh, Baba Bahandra, Baba Hondri, Bibi Kira Baba Handi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, Mama Handi. The Lord says, as, as you dig deeper into His Word and you start standing more on His Word, He's going to start having you do things, things you never thought you could do, even in, in work and business. There, there are things coming that you... It's, it's almost like there, there, there's things that have been jumping out in the Word of God to you. That you're just quite not sure what, why they were jumping up. It's to prepare you for what's to come. That makes sense to you. And as that happens, this, your, your family is going to stand out above your relatives and everybody to show off the glory of God and what God can do in family and begin to draw them in to the kingdom of God. Because you've got family that are running yeah and there. Yeah. And sometimes they talk bad against you because of what you stand in, in the in the body of Christ. And the Lord says, 
He's going to put you up to a point where they're going to look up and say, look, and say, what, what's going on there? And you can say, it's God. Because of God, we are here. And they'll stand as a witness into their lives. Amen. Thank you, Father. Pastor Natalie. Yes. Oh. You've almost had like a bucket list or, or a shopping list that you've given to God. He says he hasn't forgotten. Starting this year, you're going to start ticking some of those lists off because you're going to start supplying what you've asked for. Amen? It's quite a long list. Yeah. But he's going to start. And I want to give you an example. There's a, there's a lady, when she was a kid, I won't, I, I, I'm not going to give you her name. You can come speak to me afterwards and I'll tell you who it is. She asked God for a horse. 40 years later, God supplied the exact horse she asked for. He hasn't forgotten your shopping list. I call it the shopping list because that's the only way I can describe it, like a bucket list and a shopping list of things you want God to do for you and requests you've made. I would like this and that. You take that list and you put it in front of you every day. He's going to start supplying this year. You're going to start ticking off. Amen. James chapter 2, verse 14 to 25. Oh, thank you, Father. What does a prophet, my brethren, if someone says he has faith and does not have works? Can faith save him? Who wants to answer the question? When you got saved, were there works involved? Yes. You had to stand up and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? And Savior of your life. Verse 15, If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you give them, the things which, you give them not the things which are needed for the body, what does a prophet? Think about that. Go your way. Don't worry. God will supply, but you have the supply in your hand. It's not going to profit them, is it? No. And the same goes for me and you. We have the supply. We have the answer from God's word. You're a life giver. Are you not? Yes. Yes. You are. If, I, if, if we had to go drop you off in an area where nothing is really growing and it's a tough place, as a, as a Christian, as a member of the body of Christ, you should produce when you get dropped off there because you are life and life abundantly. Come on. Because isn't that what the Word of God says? Hmm. Yes. Challenge you this morning. Mm. But here we go. Thus also faith by itself, if it doesn't have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith with my works. James speaking. You know, I can have faith to heal the sick. But what does it profit the sick if I don't go pray for the sick? If they are demon-possessed, then we don't cast out the devils. Hmm? You can have all the faith in the world, and it's going to profit nobody until you start doing something. Amen. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. What a statement, James. What a statement. He, he later on says, even the devils should know your name. 
I'm going to ask you that this morning. Do the devils know your name? Amen. Come on. It takes me back to the seven sons of Sceva. When they tried to cast out the devil, what did, what, did, what did the devil say to them? John, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? Too many Christians come to church, hear the word, lakke op a and then they go home, and they live the rest of the week like they live every other day. And I guarantee you, some of them, if they had to face a demon-possessed person or pray for someone, and the demon said to will we'll respond exactly like he did to the seven sons of Sceva. Jesus I know, but who are you? I don't know you. It's about time you let the devil know who you are. And the only way he's going to know who you are is when you start becoming a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word. Amen? Amen? This area, you've evangelized quite a bit. Put out the word. Households have received the word. Amen? And as you continue to pray for this area, things will change. As I was coming here this morning, it was the first time I've arrived and I've seen people going to church next door. And I watched some of the people cross the road. And I, and I think I'd, I'd mentioned to to Tanya, my wife, I said, hey, he's, he's a drinker. He drinks and smokes. Now I can guarantee you, just from the, just, I don't know if it's the Holy Ghost that was showing me something, or, but just from he, the way he went, he was walking across, this what they do not put on the character. It's become a habit, and it's become something you, people just do. And coming to church is not something you just do. When you come to church, you come to hear the word, you come to receive from the Holy Ghost. So you can speak into your life. Amen. And if you come with an expectation, let me tell you, he'll meet your expectation. If you come looking and saying, Lord, I want a word from you, you'll get the word. Yeah. Because the Holy Ghost is interested in each one of us. Jesus is making intercession for you right now at the seat at the, at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. That's how much he loves you. Doesn't sit here the list. Just today. Yeah. Yeah. Forget from Pastor Yanni. He's he's good. Um, yeah. Pastor Yaku. Yeah, he's good. Yo. Jacob Zuma. Ish. We, that's two weeks of intercession just there. No. He doesn't do that. He goes, look at all these believers. Let's make him. And he, he's quite, it's a constant thing. He doesn't pick and choose. Whether you hear or do of the word. He, He's still making intercession for you. Why? Because he wants to get to know you. And a matter of fact, he's waiting for many of us to come to him and say, Father, I want to know you. Hmm? I said it last time I was here. Go sit in your lounge or in your bedroom. Just sit on the bed. Have a chair across from you and begin to talk to the chairs. Jesus is sitting there like a friend. Come on. You don't have to use special words. You know, there's an Italian lady. You've all heard the book. Hey, God. How does she address him? Hey, God. That's how she spoke. He, he'll address you the same way you speak. Come on. Then maybe he just sometimes needs to give us a clap and he'll give you the clap anyway. He does that. He brings correction. But how can he bring correction if you don't even know him? And you don't have that relationship. Faith without works. You want faith? Get to know your heavenly father. Where are we? Which verse are we on? 19. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac, his son, at the altar? Oh. Abraham with Isaac at the altar. Before, I, before he got to that altar... He knew he had to sacrifice Isaac. He had already made his mind up. God will raise my son up from the dead. Because what was the promise of God? That from that seed, Isaac's seed, there will be many nations. And if he killed him, he was, he, Abraham was persuaded. Beyond a shadow of doubt, God will raise him from the dead. And he put his faith in action and said, Lord, you said I'm going to offer him. I'm going to offer him. Hmm? He believed. Do you see that faith was working together with his works? 
and by works faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him righteousness. It was accounted unto him righteousness. Let me ask you this morning, how many of you are righteous in this place this morning? I've got a couple on this side and there. How many of you are righteous in this place this morning? Amen. Because the day you got born again, you were made righteous. You don't even have to work for it. If someone tells you you've got to work to be righteous, my goeie genichte gaan lees jou Bible. You are righteous. You have been made righteous in the... Amen. There's no, there's no second guessing it. Too many Christians have been trying to... How do I become righteous? No, you are made righteous. You are already righteous. And he was called the, the friend of God. You see, then that man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise... It was not Rahab, a harlot, also justified by works when she received the messages and sent to them out another way. That, that is a good point James puts there. And I like what he has to say about um, Rahab. She was justified. So much so that she's in the lineage of Jesus. Amen? A harlot. Do you think a harlot made it into his lineage? But she stepped out. Hmm? She, she knew who the Israeli men were because she even said to them the stories men were quivering when they heard Israel was coming because of what Israel had done all the conquests and everything that, those, those huge giants in the land they were scared of the Israelis she knew it and she hid them amen Let's go to Psalm 23 now. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You shall not have need because he's your shepherd. Isn't that true? How many can testify that he's met your needs? Amen? And it should be a daily thing. When you get up in the morning, Lord, give, I have a need. I want you to meet it. Come on. Or am I wrong? Lord, let's wait till the end of the month. No. Let it be a daily thing that you start receiving things from the Lord. Daily. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul and leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Now this is where I want to be, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil. But in the body of Christ, there are many people that have been walking through the shadow of the valley of death and they've come to a stop. Because circumstances have risen up so high that they are in this valley of the shadow of death. That supply, we don't know where the next meal's coming from. The bank account's low. And instead of looking at the Word of God, because they're no longer doers, they just hear us, they start camping out in the valley. You say, how can you say they camp? Well, they get comfortable. There are many people that have got comfortable in their circumstances. Some people get comfortable with lack and poverty. But that's not where you should be comfortable. Maybe you've been there and you've put up your tent because you're that comfortable. There are those that, that, that might even put up their tent and spend a day or two there, then realize, hang on, the Word of God says something different to my circumstances. And then the bell for the pastor, pastor, help me. And the pastor's going to pray for you. Maybe the day will come, the pastor says, sorry, it's time you start standing on your own two feet and you pray for yourself and you sort your situation out. Then the others, they get so comfortable, they put up the table. Those that have been camping, You've got your camping table. It's got nookies underneath. You put all your stuff away, your plates. You make a fire. You're you there for the long haul. Uh-uh. No ways. You can't stay there. Because that's not what the Word of God says. It says, you will fear no evil, and He'll take you through the other side, right? But the only way I'm going to know that is if this Word is reality in my life. And the only way it becomes reality is when I become a doer of the Word. And not a hero only. 
your rod and staff, they comfort me. See, many people in that situation where they, they, they're camping out in the circumstances, there's no comfort. There's worry and there's fear. And let me tell you, who's bringing the worry and the fear? Because I had, do not have a, sp a spirit of fear, but of peace and sound mind. And that's an issue. When fear starts coming, you should start realizing something's wrong. Because God's not going to bring the fear. Amen. And he carries on to say, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He didn't say, I'm going to prepare the table when you're comfortable. David writes, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Not when you're comfortable, I'm preparing the table. He wants you to come and eat and partake of the things of God when things are going rough. Because when it's comfortable, what's the use of partaking? That's when you should be growing yourself in the Word. But when it's rough and tough, there's something there for you to partake of. Come receive. If I say to you all out, outside, I've, I've brought some lovely food, and all you have to do is partake, and you all stay inside you, and you don't go partake. Whose fault is it? Mine or yours? Exactly. So if you don't start partaking of the things of God, whose fault is it? Your pastor's or yours? It's yours. Amen? You see, the pastor can carry you so far on, on his faith to a point. But your faith has got to take you further. The same goes in a family. I can carry my children to a point with my faith. But they've got to learn to start exercising their faith in the Word of God. Because I can only carry them so far. And it's true. I learned from an early age. I grew up in church. My dad is a pastor. And I learned at an early age to start praying for healing and stuff for myself. Because he would pray, and then he would say, Jason, now you pray. You do something about it. And that's how he taught us. And it's important because your pastors can only carry you to a certain point. And you can't live on your pastor's faith and have him carry you all the time. It's got to, you've got to come to the point where you're your own person in Christ and you have your own faith and you can walk it. And you can come and get advice from your pastor. And he can lead you and show you things. And the Lord might show, say, no, no, just make a correction here, mate. Amen. You know, some people like to, to, to set up a WhatsApp group. But for me... I've got this and this problem. And it's true. I've seen it. Even in our church. Next thing, you get all these WhatsApps. You need to pray. And there's like 300 people on the WhatsApp group. My goodness. You say, what's wrong with that? Well, let me ask you this. What's that per other person praying? Do you know what they're going to pray for you? Are they going to pray in line with the Word of God? Sorry, I'm going to steal your Bible. Or are they going to pray, pray in the line with what they have in their mind and imagination? Hmm? It's important guys it's so important you have the word you receive the word you got to start taking the word and making it active in your life amen amen yes don't set up your campsite because you know let me ask you this this morning who are you identifying with do you identify with christ or you're identifying with this world. You know, in South Africa, like that good up your umlak. That like ni good ni ne. But does it matter? Why doesn't it matter? Sorry, Kevin. Let me hear. God's in control. You're right, God's in control. But you know what? Who did he give power and authority to? To us. It's up to us to do something. We can sit and wait for God to do something and He's going to go, Agvach for yo. As long as the Christians are praying for this country and the Christians see hope, this country ain't going to die. It's not going to change. I look at Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is worse off than us. But you want to know there's more millionaires in Zimbabwe at the moment than there was before? Yeah. And they have their own compounds and everything. 
But there are Christians there that have been praying for that country. I spoke to a lady the other day. She, she had just come back from leave. I said, where'd you go? Zimbabwe. I said, oh, how's it in Zimbabwe? She says, it's rough. But those that are willing to push are making a good living. Hmm. But you, we're the difference in this country. Come on, this country is built on Christian principles. As long as the church is willing to stand and call those things that be not as though they were. I made a note here. Africa shall be saved. God didn't show that to Rhino Bonka. For it not to be fulfilled. Africa is being saved. There's a hunger in Africa. There's a hunger amongst people. But what are you willing to do with the word that you have? Hmm? You've got to be able to do the word. Not just come to church. You've got to, you're the difference in your workplace. You're the difference in your family. You're the difference when you go out to the shops. Maybe, shall we, shall we put a challenge forward this morning? Who wants to be challenged? I get a couple of okays. This week, when you go do groceries, go through the store and say, Lord, show me somebody who I can pay for their groceries. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my, do it. He's going to show you somebody. You know, maybe it's a guy. He just wants bread. Pay for his bread. And see the difference you make in his life. Hmm? I've walked to the store. Look, he has 200 rand cash. I know what I need to buy. The Lord says, that 200 rand, go give it to that whim. Hmm? Challenge. Let me challenge you. And when you do it, you say, Lord, I thank you for the, the harvest and return on this. Come and you come give Pastor Yelling the testimony and see what happens in your week after you've done that. Mm. That's a challenge. Because hmm? you become a doer. You start communicating. You start listening to the Holy Spirit. Because that's what the Holy Spirit is there for, to lead and guide us, to comfort us. When you build that relationship with Christ, He talks to you. No, Jesus doesn't talk to you. Let me tell you, He talks to you. It's not always... A loud, booming voice. Hmm? Although when he wants to get you to do something, sometimes I, I was laying down the other day, and I, I was like, oh, I'll get up in 10 minutes to pray. And I heard this, Jason. I thought, Tanya, what's wrong? No, it's not me. It was the Lord. Get up. It was loud. I actually thought it was my wife. And it wasn't her. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost talks to you. Now I'm, That's why I'm challenging you. Because then you become a doer of the word. Get sensitive with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Meet somebody's need. Maybe just, oh, I'm pray for the worm. He needs healing. Amen? Oh, thank you, Father. Let's go to Hebrews 11. We read, we, we read in James chapter 2, we read about Abraham. And Abraham believed God. And in Hebrews, we read in Hebrews 11, the writer of Hebrews tells us by faith, Abraham obeyed. When God called him out of the place where he was living, Abraham obeyed. And by faith, Abraham believed that his seed. He would have the seed of many nations. He didn't start looking at his body. nor Abraham didn't look at his body nor consider the death of Sarah's womb. That's in your Bible, right? Yes, if you go in the Old Testament. But what did Sarah do? We don't read. In the Old Testament, it doesn't tell us about Sarah, does it, Pastor Yanni? just says she laughed. But yeah, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, it says, By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. Something must have changed in Sarah for it to get an account in Hebrews 11. Something changed where she began to believe the word of God. Because by faith, she received to conceive seed. Something changed in Sarah. Think about it. Abraham... He didn't consider the, his age nor the death of Sarah's womb. 
But Sarah was the one that laughed. And the promise was to... Abraham couldn't do it on his own, and they tried to do it on their own. They made their plan A and plan B. Yes. How many times have you made plan A and plan B? See, a hearer of the word will make a plan A and a plan B, where a doer of the word will go, Lord, what's your plan? I'm thinking like this, but what are you thinking? Like you said to Jeremiah, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. In the beginning of the year, the Lord said to me, Jason, get ready too. Now, I can't tell you what he told me. But he said, get ready too. And I actually ministered a series on it because he's getting the church ready to do something. As the body of Christ, he's, put, he's been sifting and, and shaking and there's more sifting and shaking coming. Pastor Yanni's warned you, this year's going to be, things are going to get rough. Have you noticed the prices on the shelves? We spoke to someone yesterday. There's a lady. She has a shopping list and it doesn't change from month to month. From last month to this month, it was a thousand rand difference. That, that's a big increase. And it's going to go up again. But you know what? The best thing is, my God supplies all my needs to His riches in glory. Amen? That, that's the most amazing thing. I'll give you a testimony. And, and just in our own lives, we said, Lord, we want 5,000 rand extra a month. Over on top of everything else. Not even just... just Give us 5,000 rand extra a month. And we started believe, praying and, and standing in faith. And You see, there's something called believing and there's believed. If I'm believing for something, that means I continuously believe. But when I've believed, it's been fulfilled. So you can't keep believing. At some point, you've got to have believed, like Abraham believed. And next thing, we're like, no, it's not, it's, nothing's happening. And then we looked at each other and said, but it came from that direction. We were looking in that direction, and God sent it from that direction. And I think gee, over the last couple of months, it's come from all over the show. So we had to learn to stop looking where we want to see it come from, but start just receiving it for where God wants to give it from. Hmm? And, he, and He's been faithful and true. And that, that's standing on the Word of God. He says, ask me anything. Ask me. And will I not? Come on. We're the body of Christ. We ask. You know, when I went to Mozambique, I said to the po- I, and I, I went for one specific, specific thing to go do. God, God told me to go minister to the pastors. Normally we travel and we <laughs> six, seven hours to a bush church and you go minister and you sleep there. And the Lord said, not this time. So I went with a message for just pastors. I said to them, no problem. I'm coming. Eight days, I'm only with you eight days. I will pay for all the food and I will pay for the transport of the pastors. Now, you never know what you're in for when you make a statement like that. It was, a, it was a fair sum of money, let me tell you. But you know what? God touched people's lives. Those pastors went back to their bush churches different, they were changed. The word of knowledge flowed. It was amazing how God just operated. But something changed in, in Sarah. What needs to change in you? Where are you today? Hmm? Maybe you need to start looking at things and saying, Lord, your word says this. It's contrary to where I am today. Today I make the decision. I want to be there where your word says I am. What's it going to take for me to get there? How do I put this word into action to get there? Hmm? Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Men, women, well, husbands and wives, should we put it that way? Hmm. Come with your wife. Come with your wife. Hmm. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Not, uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You know, as 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 a husband and wife, as a family. 
you've stepped out to start doing things for God. Things you never thought you were going to do. But the devil's been there to challenge both of you. And, and he's, he's, he's going he's gonna to push one more time on your family. And you're going to have to stand and push him back. He's going to push this marriage a little bit. But you're going to have to stand and push back as husband and wife. And when you do that, you're going to see there's going to be a new release in your family, in your finances, in your businesses. And even those walls that you've put up, some of them may have to come down and when they come down there's going to be a bigger change I don't know if that means anything to you but he's, he's challenged you once already he's going to try to challenge you one more time get ready but you make the stand and you push him back and you'll see something change. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you, you tried it a couple of times in our marriage. You got to push back. Hmm? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And carry on in verse 11. Because he... Because she judged him faithful who he had promised. There we have the answer. What, what changed in Sarah's life? Sorry? I've got five minutes left. Let's close the word. You look to her. Sarah changed because she judged him faithful. Are you going to judge him faithful this morning? Are you going to judge him faithful this morning? Judge his his, his word, faithful and true. Ne pastor. Yeah. Judging faithful and true. You've got a list of things, pastor, that you've asked from the Lord. Things to do with ministry. Ne? Or not? Yeah. Things that you want to see happen in your, in your ministry. The Lord says that you start spending time with Him and, and, and start exercising the word and you'll start tick, 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 tick. And it, another thing for you, don't desire another man's anointing. The anointing God's given you is perfect for you. Amen. Ladies, the challenge for you this morning, as you've heard the word, pick it up and start doing it even more. And the more you do it, the more change you're going to see in your, your lives and in your finances and in your families. Yeah, struggles have been great. Hmm? You started to make correction. And you've heard the word this morning. And your reaction was, I don't want to be here. I want to be here. You want what God has for you. What God's promised. Do you know everything, every promise in the Word of God has been fulfilled. Jesus died on the cross and He's risen from the dead. That, that, the New Testament is, is, a living, is a will that's been fulfilled. So you've got to start laying hold of those promises because every promise has been fulfilled and it's ready for you to take. But if you don't go take them, you've got to go take them. You know, if, you, if someone leaves a will behind and he, 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 he leaves a Lamborghini for you, and the, the, the lawyer says, yeah, the, the keys are, yeah, the keys, this is the address where the car is. If you don't go pick up that car, you'll never drive it. The same things go to the promises of God. So start taking the word and start writing down what God's given you and who you are in Christ. And as you start looking at it and start saying, Lord, this is where we are. Let's go to the next step. Even if it's in finances, start asking, Lord, we will, I want this. If it's work, I want an increase. Yeah, this is how much I want. Be specific. Ask my wife. When it comes to work, we're specific with the bonuses and increases we want. We say, Lord, this is what I want. 
and he's faithful and true. If they say there's no bonuses, rubbish, because of who you are in Christ, there is a bonus. That's what I say. As long as I'm in my company, my company is going to prosper because of who I am. And let me tell you, I work I mean, with nine people in the company. This year, we've landed the biggest contracts we've ever had that actually should go to companies that have 20 or 30 or 40, maybe 200 people. You see the difference you can make by changing the attitude and the way you see yourself. Take the word. Become a doer of the word. Hmm? Make a stand. If you look, do you have work? Self-employed. you know what you do? You start calling in the business. And when you get the business, you do it as unto the Lord. Because when you do it as unto the Lord, he's gonna, he'll honor the work of your hands. Okay? Lord, thank you for this, this couple, this family. May they not just, may they move forward, Lord, in leaps and bounds. And as they start taking the word of God, start applying it in their lives, start doing it. May they see, th see things change. Yes, Lord, even in the next three months, may things change for the greater, for the greater in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you know the heart's desires. You know, <laughs> You've got some desires that look too good and too, too, or should I say, too great. But the Lord says He'll give you your heart's desires. You just stay fast and be, build up your relationship with Him and spend time with Him and spend time ministering to Him and let the Holy Ghost minister back to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. You have got desires. There's things you've had, desires you've had, they go back a long way. Things you wanted to do, one of them is concerning holiday. Get ready, he's going to fulfill them. Yeah? Good morning. How are you guys doing? Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for this husband and wife. Mm. Lord, things have not always been easy. There's been challenges. There's been fights. The devil's tried to put his foot in the door. But this morning we could kick him out in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for a strengthening in this marriage and in this relationship. And in their finances, in Jesus' name, amen. You know, sometimes there's been a bit of doof doof, kick him out, he's gone, things change. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Morning. How are you? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> wow. You've seen things in the Word of God that you still haven't seen fulfilled in your life. And you've said, Lord, I, I want these. I, want, I don't know how to put it to you. There are things you, that you desired from the Word. Even the Lord working through your life. And I'm all right. Mm. And you haven't seen it yet. Mm -mm. The more you spend time in, in, the, with the, in the Word and... and even this morning's message, become a doer. The more you start doing things, and, the, and even setting, like, like we've done, Lord, we want an extra 5,000 rand a month. Start setting those, those uh, almost like cha challenging your faith. And as you start doing that, you're gonna start, the Lord's going to start using you in those things that, that you've seen from the word that you want. Even laying hands on the sick. Mm. Even in your family. But together. One thing I can say, once you get married, it's a choice. You're together in it. Yeah. Go make a list. Have you, have you even written them down? Go make a list. Go write them down. 
I don't know why I feel to say this, even in your, in your giving, as you give, write down what you've given and say, okay, Lord, we've given. Let's see what we receive. And, and, and you're going to be surprised at what's gone out and what's come in. I'll, I'll give you this from Oral Roberts' life. The one, the one evening his, his son phones him. He says, Dad, because Oral Roberts University, they had, they had financial issues. He says, I, I don't know what to do. Can you come pray? And they got together in, in, in the, the prayer room. It's called the, the, I don't know if you've seen the image of the hands, the prayer, the prayer hands. It's a tower on top, and they, they went to go pray there. And the, the Lord said to Oral Roberts, you've, you've drawn out of your heavenly account. There's nothing in your heavenly account. And he turned to his son and says, what's the biggest thing we can give? And, he's, and he turned to his dad and says, we give him, we've got, the only thing we've got that's the biggest is the jet. And they gave the jet away. And the moment they did that, everything just changed. I don't know if, if that means it, it helps you. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. Don't come here just to hear the word. Come here to receive. I want you to, to start saying, I'm going to come here with an expectation. I'm coming with an expectation. Every service you come to, come with an expectation. Young men. <laughs> Nah. You've heard the word preached in this place. You know, going, is that Bible school? And you go into Bible school. So you're receiving knowledge of the word. Now you start pra- putting it into practice. Hmm? Is that your mother? Nah. How old are you? 21. Hmm. It's time to start exercising your own faith. Hmm. You made a decision to go into Bible school because you want to learn from the Word of God. Now as you're learning, start putting it into practice. And as you start putting it into practice, you'll see things change. Even when it comes to, to looking for work, God will honor you. Because, you know, many people say, no, there's no, there's no work because of BEE. Rubbish. There's work for everybody in this country, whether BEE or not. Amen? Because of who you are in Christ, doors will open. Hmm? And you, listen. You know what the Word of God says? Obey your mother and father, and things will go well with you. And it's important. I've heard testimonies of, of, of men at 60. Because they obeyed their mother and father, God did certain things in their lives. And he said, because you obeyed your mother and father. Amen. Pastor. Let's pray for your pastors. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there's going to be. The, the Lord says there are certain things you're going to have to start laughing at. Hmm. Man. And you're going to laugh. And you're going to laugh. And as you laugh, those things are just going to become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And even as a husband and wife doing this year, yes, you'll face challenges, but together you'll overcome them. It's going to take a togetherness. And I know you've been praying about work and leaving work. So, Heavenly Father, you know the desire of his heart. He's almost like me. He just wants to run and run and run and run and run. But Lord, you make the right opportunity and the right doors open at the right time for him to make that right decision to go full time in Jesus' name. And Lord, as senior pastors over this ministry, may you continue to lead and guide them and give them words for, for, for the congregation that even as we go through this year, even when things look rough and tough, that the word of God will show it opposite. 
that the word of God will stand out and say, hey, this is not as what it looks in the spiritual realm. This is nothing. This is easy. For what lays ahead is going to be great. And greater than what you've seen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Abiki lach. Sometimes we all need to do that. Laugh at our circumstances. If you've never done it before, when you're praying, go pray. Spend time with the Lord. And then just put your circle and begin to laugh at them. And let the Holy Ghost take over. And you'll laugh. And you'll laugh. And the peace will come. And things will just... Alan's going, "Mm mm-hmm. Yeah, because you've done it. You've been there. And it's a laughter you can't stop. Because it comes, it comes from down here. I, 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 I can't explain it to you, but it comes from here. My wife said to drive me home from a church service. I couldn't drive. I was, I was laughing so much, she'd hit a pothole and be funny. <laughs> but that, 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 it's, it's not a natural laughter, it's from the Holy Ghost. When, you, and when it's over, there's a peace, there's tranquility, it, even healing comes it, it's just it, it's an amazing thing and it's available to all of us because there are rivers rivers of living water that flow from your innermost being amen thank you pastor yanni donkey buyer